Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, today, we are going to be going over probably my favorite, um, uh, one of them, one of my very favorite projects that I've ever created. Um, and it is the plan a Thanksgiving dinner. Um, the idea for this activity came from planning Thanksgiving on my own. And when I say on my own, um, <laughs> know that that's not exactly what it means. I've never made a turkey. I've never had to make my own mashed potatoes. And I've been married to my sweet husband for over 10 years now. So I'm not a real adult. Um, but it came when we were planning with his family. And no, actually, it was when we were going to be doing it at my parents' house. And his parents were going to be coming and I signed up for all of these dishes because I wanted to, you know, be the homemaker. And I remember trying to think about the logistics of the dishes that I would be making and the time that they needed to go in the oven and the time that I would need to pull them out um, so that they would be fresh and ready and warm. And funny ending to that story, my cute in-laws walked into my mom's house, my mom and dad's house with smoke billowing and the fire alarm going off because I burnt the marshmallow topping on the sweet potatoes. <laughs> so my logistics didn't go quite as well. I'm not very good with the broiler. Um, but that being said, it really opened my eyes to how much um, thought and detail and logistics and problem solving and forward thinking and critical thinking goes into pulling off a meal that is eaten and enjoyed and done with in literally like 30 minutes. But when you think of all of the planning and things that went into it before that, it's so much more than that. So my idea behind this is that it will open your students' eyes, um, that they will be able to see what they are learning curriculum wise, as far as in, you know, math and ELA and maybe even in design and how that can be applied kind of just in the real world and how that comes into play, um, even with something like planning a Thanksgiving meal for family and friends. Um, so again, this is one of my very, very favorites because it is so eye opening. And the vision behind all of it is that by the time they are done with this project, they go home with their eyes opened, um, filled with gratitude, ready to help whoever is hosting and ready to express the gratitude that they now have for whoever has kind of put in that thought. Or um, I know that students come from all different um, walks of life. And so if anything, if they are not experiencing that, they kind of have their eyes opened to something that they could plan and do one day as their little dream. So again, one of my favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and share my screen. So this project has had a lot of, geez, redesigns. The basis of it has stayed the same. Um, but I have done a couple of redesigns. One of that was during like 2020 and trying to make this a digital product. That first digital design, many of you probably tried that in your class and thought it's good, but it's just not quite there. And so I think it was last year I jumped back into it and totally revamped the digital side of things because I knew that I could do better before it was just like the printable pages and you know, the text box on top of it, but it was just too small and too thin. So everything has been revamped on the digital side of things to where it is much more user-friendly. So let's go ahead and just jump in. Um, I'm thinking, so when you design or when you download this product, essentially you will come to this page, you see the cover, we see the terms of use, we scroll down, um, know that this is not the only video, video walkthrough. I've linked one here for you. So you can come and press play and I'll walk you through every step. If you are more of a print and go type of person, the print version is linked right within the Google slide. So you actually just come here and you click on that button and then you push on the blue. Um, a lot of people are tempted. I think it would probably work on this, but if it was a Google slide, it almost just brings you to a preview and you may get, um, you may have to send me permissions. Don't click down on the picture, click up here on that blue link um, and that'll bring you directly in. So when I click on that, um, it links me to the PDF form of all of this. So I've gone back and forth on whether we should start with the print version, kind of just the classic print and go, um, or the digital. Know that you don't have to pick either or. You could do a mix of both. So kind of by looking through these and deciding what's best for you or what's best for your class. I love the idea of doing more of a hybrid approach where some of it is print and some of it is digital. Um, but again, you can totally adapt this to your class and to your needs. Um, the other beautiful thing about this activity is talking about like adaptability. 
is that it can be adapted to so many different kind of grades and levels. I've had this used in lots of home ec classrooms. I've had 12th graders use this. Um, I've even, I've seen homeschool that this was a really favorite like homeschool activity. Um, I'm pretty sure it's even been used in like a third grade. So it's very adaptable to your classroom. So if you're wondering kind of where your grade level fits in, um, there's something in here pretty much for everyone, okay? So let's talk, and I've included differentiated like sheets as well to make it that way. Um, I'm thinking, let's go through the print. No, I think let's go through the digital version first, and then we'll switch over to the printable counterpart, or maybe we'll just go kind of back and forth between the two. That way you can see both options. That actually probably might be more helpful. So we'll do both. So let's go ahead and just get started. You'll see with this activity, um, I lay this all out for you. You'll notice like with the grocery ads, we have different options with like decimals and percentage off with coupons or, you know, decimals and 25 cent prices um, or just very kind of like whole numbers. So you've got different versions there. Um, I've got the different template examples, but let's go ahead and start with the design shop. So essentially students are asked to create a, um, an invite, right? To invite their guests to their meal. And so they are figuring out the date, um, the time and the location, and they need to make sure that they are including that with their invitation. So this is one that I have designed. Let me go ahead and show you what the blank digital design looks like. And before we go there, we actually need to figure out how many guests we're going to have, but we'll just skip ahead so you can see this side by side. So let's go to the design shop. So here's my digital design shop. If I come over here to this page and I'll move my window, um, you'll notice that I've included fun little graphics that they can simply just click, single click, drag and drop. And then they use the corners to kind of just add these fun little embellishments. They can add the text box, they can add color, um, but a lot of fun little details um, just to kind of make it unique and give it that fun Thanksgiving feel. But before we go here, um, we do need to figure out how many people there are. Let me show you kind of the counterpart for the PDF version of that. So here's the PDF version and let's go ahead and you'll notice in the PDFs, I do kind of walk you through each step as well. Um, the other beautiful part about this activity is that you'll notice there's a lot of activities here. In fact, in one of the reviews, um, a teacher said that they could pretty much use this for two weeks and have a full, very <laughs> busy schedule trying to get it all in. Um, you don't have to do everything. You can kind of pick and choose for your class what you would like to do. Um, you can have students work in groups. Um, I've heard of teachers having students do this in pairs or they could do this individually. Um, there's just a lot of flexibility with how you implement this. Um, so here is the invitation page, what that looks like um, for the printable. So this one combines my copy shop with the invitation and the who's invited. So students start by listing out four to 10 people that will attend their dinner. And then the other fun thing that they need to take into account, which you also have to do this when you're planning a big dinner with people like this, is estimate the number of servings. So how many servings would each person use? And I have kind of like typically children require one serving or less. So again, this is where we could do some decimals or some fractions. Um, and adults average two to three, especially when we're talking Thanksgiving. This isn't just your typical um, you know, dinner, this is a feast. So you've got to estimate, you know, how much of each, you know, how many servings will this person be eating, right? So we write down the person's name that's invited, and this could be their friends, this could be family, this could be their classmates. They estimate the number of servings here, and then they total up their number of servings here. And that's the total of servings that they will be using as they plan out their recipes, as they go grocery shopping, and kind of keeping that all in mind. So once they've done that, I'd have them come over here and they work on their invitation, and they can just do this by hand. They're including those details that they're um, people that are attending going to need like the time and the date. And then we head to the copy shop and the copy shop is a lot of fun. Um, this is where they decide how many invitations they need. So if they did one through four, this is the cost for just a, you know, a black ink on white paper, or if they're doing a color ink on white paper, depending on their design over here, they need to estimate how much it's going to be. And there is a scanning fee. So their initial scan is $4. So they do their 
their work here, and then they come up with that total cost for printing. I think the other thing that's really fun about this activity is that their eyes will also be opened to the cost of doing a nail like this. Um, another fun kind of extension activity is to give them a budget and try and have them stick to that budget. Um, but again, just so many ways that you can kind of implement this and do this. So there's the printable counterpart. Let's go back to the digital one. So here was our design and invitation. Um, it's this page where they will type out, you know, there's the people that are invited and then the numbers of servings um, that they estimate that they will need and then the total number of servings there. So we've got that page. So we do that. We head to the copy shop. Same thing. Here is the copy shop for the digital version. Um, this is really cool. This is called a picture placeholder. If you've used pretty much any of my products, um, I've really enjoyed utilizing this. Um, the beauty of the picture placeholder is that they just go replace image and then they say upload from computer or camera and they could just take a picture of their work and it'll automatically insert it right there. So this is a great way for them to show their work without having to use like the pen or the doodle, you know, marker thingy that they could use in Google sites. So they can still do their work by hand, but they can still be held accountable for showing their work by just taking a quick um, picture of it. And I think I have a completed option like this one here. So again, kind of showing their work, taking a picture of it, and then they would type the total cost of how much their printing will be there. So whew, we're just getting started, guys. <laughs> so much to go over with this because it's so fun. Okay, let's go to the meal planner next. So this is the meal planner, um, and this is a lot of fun. So essentially what they're going to be doing is that they are going to be working through recipes, and you can use my recipes that I've included, which are actual real recipes. I worked really hard to give you um, recipes that were simple enough that used um, a small amount of ingredients, uh, so it wasn't too overwhelming. But also that if students wanted to take these recipes home and try them and kind of like contribute to their Thanksgiving meal, that they could. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at some of those. So again, we have the digital version and the printable version. So students would start and I would have them start with the recipe cards. So here's an example of kind of the recipe cards, right? This is the digital version of it. And we have students picking out um, six different items. If you would like them to do more than that, we have these additional items that they can pick out as well, where they could actually add their own recipes um, that their families use for Thanksgiving. Um, so again, just really fun that way. So students come in and they need to pick out six different recipe cards. And again, these are actual recipes that they can try at home that I tried really hard to give you nice um, fractions that things will just work out really well as they go in and triple or double some of these recipes. So they could pick a turkey, they could pick a ham, we've got our candied yams. They should see pretty much um, all of your kind of classics, right? Um, let's go ahead. I also have this page here where we have like our roasted asparagus, our corn on the cob, um, all of these different types of classics. Um, down here is where you will see that they could actually add in their own recipe. So I'll zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. And what's fun about this is, again, we're using a picture placeholder here. So let's say that they had a cherry pie that they do every single year and they get the ingredients from um, their parents. They get the recipe. They write it down here. We figure out what our serving size is. Um, but what's really cool about this is that they could actually upload their own picture or you could just use the Google search. So we go replace image after I click on that picture placeholder. Then I go search the web and let's say it's for a cherry pie. I search it. Here come my results and I double click on it and it'll automatically insert it into that picture placeholder. So again, it's a way that they can kind of personalize it and it feel like it is their kind of just own or that they have their own little spin on this. So again, students are going through and they are picking out about five of those. Let's go ahead and look at the printable counterpart of this page. So we were just at the copy shop. We made our invitation. Now we are at the meal um, planner. So again, here's my menu items. I like them to come up with six different items. If you would like them to come up with more, I've also included these two additional spaces. Um, but the best way to kind of pick out what is going to be on the menu is to look at the recipe cards 
or to come up with their own. So here is my recipe cards for the printable version, kind of that same thing. They look at it, they pick their favorite, they try and come up with kind of a very full meal. And again, here's this place um, or space on the printable version where they can, again, if they have a favorite recipe that's not there, that they can kind of add in their own little details. So this is where things start to get a little complicated. And so it's good to talk to your kiddos and have them take a deep breath and tell them to get ready to get a little bit gritty because once they've picked out those six items, um, what they're going to do is that they're going to start creating their shopping list. So up here, let's say that I have my turkey and then I have my candied yams and so on and so forth. And what I'm going to be doing next is that as I list out each menu item here, I'm going to look at the recipe card and I'm going to start writing all of the ingredients that I'm going to need for my entire meal. And the other thing that I need to pay attention to is the quantity that I'm going to need as well as the serving size. So again, this is one of those pages that it may be best if they are working in a group. And for me and with my experience, um, group sizes, the best group size is three, <laughs> three, maybe four. I wouldn't go any bigger or larger than that. And try and make sure that you have at least one student in there um, that is a strong in kind of like their understanding and able to kind of act as a support to the other kiddos. Um, a fast way that I would do that in my own classroom is just before we would kind of break into something, we would just do a really quick kind of rate yourself. And I just have students look forward um, to me and I just say, okay, scale of one to five, how do we feel about, you know, this assignment? How confident do we feel? You know, rate yourself one, two, three, four, five. And I make sure that their eyes are forward. And then I'm going through and I'm making notes of who my fives are. And I know that I'm going to have at least one five and maybe a four in every single group, just to make sure that these groups that they're working um, in are level. Partners are also a great um, support to kind of just work together and help them kind of stay motivated as they work through this and as they think through this. Because if you're thinking, oh, that's a lot to think about, um, wait till we get to the Thanksgiving log logistics page because they do it all over again. So again, it's a really fulfilling, um, really great activity to let them just work through it. So tell them to take it slow and encourage them that they can do this. Let's go ahead and look at the digital counterpart again. So we go through, let's say I'm doing pecan pie. So I would go through, I would write down my different parts of my ingredients on my shopping list. As I write out my shopping list, um, you'll notice that some of them may have repeats with their ingredients. So I would think that we just talked about the pecan pie. Um, most likely there's going to be pecans on maybe the sweet potato casserole. There's not, what a shame there should be on that, but just something to keep in mind that, you know, maybe I got sweet and condensed milk here. Um, and I have sweet and condensed milk is called for in this recipe as well. And to only list that one ingredients once, um, and then alter the quantity of that as they go, if that makes sense. So they're not listing the same ingredient over and over and over again. They try and just only list the ingredients once and then take into account the amount that they need. That page alone um, could take up a whole uh, class period. So if you are thinking about doing this, um, I would encourage you to start tomorrow. Introduce it to your class. Have them do that um, invitation page. Have them head to the copy shop. Have them get really excited. And then I would also probably have them pick out their items that they would like to include in their meal. And then next class period is when I, is I, the time that I would have them go through their shopping list and start listing out all of the ingredients. I would separate it that way if it were up to me. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And again, if time-wise, um, six different meal items make you nervous, make it three, right? pick a, a main ingredient, pick a side and pick a dessert. Um, so again, you can simplify this, you can condense it. You don't have to do all of it. So just kind of based on your class, based on their needs and their capabilities, um, fill it out that way. Let's go into the menu next. So again, they've gone through and they've listed out their different items. We're gonna look at the digital version and then we will look at the printable counterpart that you could do. Um, this one's really fun as a digital, I think, 
because I just thought this little menu turned out so cute. So again, this is where we're kind of integrating a little bit of some English language arts. We could talk about some figurative language. We're going to be using some sensory language as they try and describe their dishes um, in the best way that they can, in the most appetizing way that they can. And so here's a fun kind of food word bank. We have all of these different foods that they could use to, as they list out their different items here, they'll give a nice description of what it looks like. And then we have the picture placeholders where they can just, again, we simply single click. I click replace image. I could take my own picture if I wanted, um, or I could just search the web. And let's say that this is my turkey. And I look, oh, I left the S out. Let's try that again. Looking for a Thanksgiving turkey. My images are gonna pull up. I'm gonna double click on the one that I like the most. And the beauty of these picture placeholders is that it automatically inserts it into that circle. I don't have to move it around, it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and look at a completed version of the menu to get a better idea of what that could look like. So again, I'm using these words from my food bank, the savory herb roasted turkey, a plump bird brined in ripe rosemary, roasted to golden brown perfection, topped with the finest of oil and garnished with fresh herbs. So we see a little bit of alliteration there. Um, it's just fun. Um, kids get really creative with what they come up with. Um, again, lots of alliteration there. Um, we've got some really good sensory words going on. It's fun that they can add the picture of the actual dish in there and it really starts to come to life. Let's go ahead and look at the printable version of that. So the printable kind of counterpart. So here's my menu here. So again, very much the same look, um, but it is them kind of just writing it out giving a description and then making a little image in here. So again, this is one of those that if you're brave enough and you dare kind of do both a little bit of the digital and a little bit of the printable, this would be a really great um, part to combine it. I think the shopping list is really great as a printable because students are kind of writing by hand. Um, and yeah, just kind of the kinesthetic part of that, it helps to write things down instead of just type it. So this works really great as a printable. This works really great as a printable. This is great as a printable, but it kind of comes to life a little bit more when it is that digital version of it. But again, totally up to you. And do you even have to design a menu? No, if you don't have time for this, or if you don't think that your students I would say it's more so time because I think that you will be surprised with as far as engagement goes that I think that they will really enjoy this. So there's our menu. Um, we went through the recipe cards. And again, I will always point out that these are real recipes and they're so fun. One of my favorite reviews was reading that a student actually took um, their recipes home and made them um, for part of their Thanksgiving dinner. So that just completely made my day. And I hope it was good because not all of them are tried and tested recipes, but they are based on real recipes, but I've just altered them a little bit to just make it uh, more user friendly when we're coming to kind of like the math side of things and the serving. So again, we're taking into account how many servings each one of these recipes make. And then we're thinking about how many servings do I have to plan for based on the guests that I had. So so fun. So again, here's our recipe cards. We've got those printable ones. And now we go into the adjusting recipes. And again, this would be a whole separate class period, most likely after you've done your shopping list, I would save a day for just adjusting recipes. And I would tell kids, get ready. We're going to get gritty. We are not going to give up. This is something that we can do. Um, but this is kind of that real world math with adjusting recipes as far as multiplying how many servings or how many people we need. Um, so they would start and let's say we were doing our turkey. So I would write my turkey here and then I would go and refer back to my recipe card and I would write down my ingredients here. And then I need to figure out how many times I need to multiply this recipe based on the servings that I need. So I would check the servings and it looks like it's uh, people eat about 1.5 to two pounds per person. And so one 15 to 20 pound bird is about, you know, enough for 10 people. And so kind of planning on that. The other thing that they'll have to take into account is when they go to do the Thanksgiving logistics page 
And it's like, oh my goodness, did you know that you need 24 hours for every five pounds of turkey? So when do I need to pull that turkey out in order for it to be thawed by the time that I need to cook it in order for it to be ready come Thanksgiving dinner when I said that we were going to be eating at five o'clock. So again, so, so fun in a way that it is so eye-opening into all of kind of the work and the thought and the critical thinking that goes into planning a Thanksgiving dinner. So students are going through, let's go back to where we are at. We are at adjusting recipe. So we go through, we are multiplying it by whatever need we need for the serving size. Um, and again, so just looking at this and they would go through and do it for each recipe. Again, this is a great way when they are working in groups or in pairs that each person can kind of take one and work through it together. And then they can talk about it and they can double check with each other and refer with each other. So adjusting recipes. If this is way out of your kiddo's um, capability, you don't have to do this page, right? So let's go next. So once they've adjusted their recipes, they have figured out the amount um, of ingredients that they need for each activity. And let's go ahead and look at the adjusting recipe page on our digital version as well. So you can see that. So here was our shopping list. We get our ingredients. And then we've got our menu. Oh, this is another fun page. This is another part um, that's just a fun digital page that goes along with it. So essentially they're going to put the picture of their meal in here and then we get to cover it and uncover it. And you could have students um, as they kind of, uh, what's the word, present to the class that these are the items that we are going to be serving at our Thanksgiving dinner. And I'm gonna show you what those look like. And so they can kind of uncover each one. And as they can uncover it, they could read you know, the, the title and the description that they came up with um, as they uncover the meal that they came up with. So here's an example of what that could look like. So again, I could cover it up. And this is just a fun kind of digital spin that just brings that meal to life. And again, these are picture placeholders. So how I use that, I click on the image. So easy. Click replace image, search the web. We'll do mashed potatoes on this one. And I search and I could go through all of the different images until I find the one that I like. And I double click and it'll automatically insert it into that shape or that picture placeholder. So that is just kind of another fun uh, digital extension that you have as an option. Okay. Eye-opening, right? I'm already breathing heavy from talking so much. <laughs> so here's our recipe adjust. We have the instructions here that kind of just break it down really nice. And then we simply just double click and we start typing it in how much we need it through. We've got our measurement conversions, which is wonderful if they're coming up with like say 14 tablespoons or 16 tablespoons, it's much simpler to simply write one cup instead of, or not even just to write, but to measure. So even if they can adjust those measurements um, into more user-friendly for I like quantities for their recipes. So, and again, we've got, this was one of those pages that was just way too tiny when it used to be digital. So we have all of these different items, menu item five, menu item six, that they go through and they can adjust the recipes for. Next is the grocery store. And this is again, probably one of my very favorite parts of it. And again, the grocery store alone could be a whole class period if you wanted it to be. The beauty of this um, section of the activity is that you can actually use real grocery ads. So if you've been getting them mailed to you, bring them in. Um, I think it gives it a really fun uh, feel and energy when students have something to hold that is real and that is applicable to what they are learning. So we head to the grocery store. If you haven't been getting all of those mailers, don't worry, I've even included real grocery ads for you as well. So you'll notice here, here's grocery ad one. I simply click on that blue link and we've got 13 pages worth of grocery ads. Now this is back from probably a year or two ago and probably prices are a lot different now. So that might even be something that would be interesting to compare. So we've got our one real grocery ad. Let's go back. 
We've got another option. Here's our grocery add to. And again, there's just pages that they can kind of look through as they look through their ingredients. Um, three. And again, this is one of those um, versions where the digital version is really nice. That way you're not having to like print out actual grocery ads. And finally, grocery ad number four. So you've got four different versions of real grocery ads that students can kind of look through as they go ahead and head to their grocery store. Um, this is one of the coupons that they can use. Um, notice this one's $25 off. So again, if you are working with kind of like those whole numbers, um, this is a great uh, option for those kiddos. So these are differentiated ads. So you could even give ads to your students based on their capabilities. So you could differentiate within your classroom or just know that we can differentiate based on the level that you are teaching to. So this would be my simplest grocery ad. If you don't love the idea of using the real grocery ads, come to Lemon Lane Groceries and you'll notice the prices are so nice, right? For a user-friendly. Um, so we've got these whole kind of numbers, 50 cents, 25 cents, 75 cents. So kind of that third to fourth grade range, this is a great um, option for you. Here's our second page of Lemon Lane Groceries. And everything that I've listed in those recipe cards, every one of those items can be found um, in these groceries here. As students find what they need, they can single click and drag this little highlighter box to highlight what they are shopping for. That way it'll make it a little bit easier as they go to kind of like write everything down and figure out how much their Thanksgiving dinner is actually going to cost. So that's our digital version. And remember, there's I think there's three different levels of Lemon Lane groceries. So you can either use your real grocery ads here. Here's our level one for our differentiated level. Second grocery store would be two. Um, again, just kind of a simpler coupon, um, but we get a little more sense, right? So with adding decimals or subtracting decimals, obviously adding decimals, um, the numbers are going to work out just a little bit nicer for you. So again, and then we've got our version three of our groceries at Lemon Lane, and this is a percentage off coupon. Um, Again, you could use the other coupon with these grocery ads where we get into more of a realistic type of number that they would be seen as they are shopping. So totally up to you how you use the groceries, um, but you have those three different levels to kind of just differentiate with. So there you go there. Let's see, let's go ahead and look at the printable counterpart, which is here. So again, here is our, this is kind of working backwards. This is our level three, right? Here's your coupon. Here's those different prices. Here's our level two with the 20 whole $25 off. And here's our level one. So you have all of those. The nice thing about the printable version on this one is that it all fits on that um, single page. So nice. And so that's again, um, determining whether you, you want to use principal or digital or a mix of both. Um, having this all on one page uh, might be a little bit more user friendly instead of having the digital or they could simply use the digital ads and then print out the price sheets for them. Because again, anything where they are writing down and doing a lot of kind of equating and stuff like that, um, I think it's helpful to have that principal version. So let's go and look at what that looks like. Here is the digital version of the price sheet. So they go through they write down their item, they get their cost per unit, they multiply that by the quantity to get the total item cost, right? Um, maybe have students use a calculator. Maybe that's a way that you scaffold them through this kind of uh, place, or maybe they do the math and then they double check their work with a calculator as they kind of work through all of this. So we've got our Thanksgiving price sheet and it'll keep going. Here's our digital version. And I think I've given them three work pages and then they can add the total cost there. And then to finish that one, they take the price sheet from five. Here's my total cost. They may not need a price sheet five, but it's there just in case. Um, price sheet four, here was my total. Add the total from 
page three, add the total from page two. Here's my total from page one, add that all together. You can add a sales tax challenge. So add on the sales tax and have them equate that. Um, and then don't forget to use your coupon. Um, but again, this is one that is extremely eye-opening when they consider what is a very realistic cost to plan a type of meal like this. So that one's super fun. There's our digital version of that. Let's go ahead and look at the printable counterpart of the price sheet. So there's our Lemon Lane groceries. If you were looking for the links, um, it'll look like this page. Bless me, this is when <laughs> I was still learning how to embed links in a PDF. I'll come back and update this. But if you wanna use those, you simply just click on it and it'll automatically redirect you there. Those are those real grocery ads. Um, but here's our price sheet. And again, I think that this printable may work a little bit better than that digital version for students. Um, maybe they use the back of it to show their work and then they copy it over here. Or maybe they're simply just using their work by hand and then they type it in onto that digital version. Um, but again, sometimes there is friction from working with a printable and then showing their work on a digital. But when we think about end of year testing, um, that practice uh, is actually very beneficial. So maybe you do have them do it by hand by work, and then they are taking that work and putting it digitally. Um, and again, there's a lot of practice as far as um, end of year testing and kind of like what that looks like and what they need to get used to. So that's another great option too. But here's our price sheet. This is what it looks like. There's the sales tax challenge over there. And here's where they would write their overall Thanksgiving dinner cost. Um, with this one, I think the only thing that's different is the overall cost with the no tax. Yeah, I think that one might be a little bit differentiated. Okay, Whew, take a deep breath. Now we are jumping into Thanksgiving logistics. And this is a page that will also blow their mind. So again, you may want to have a whole class period just for Thanksgiving logistics. So let's go to the digital version. We've done our price sheet. Oh, it's one of those was estimated cost. That's what it is. So if you're working on rounding, um, like rounding numbers or rounding to the nearest whole number or decimal, um, doing their cost per unit and then coming up with an estimated cost and going through and calculating that and then seeing how close their estimated total item cost is to the actual item cost, um, that is great practice for kind of rounding and practice seeing estimating and all of that. Again, do you have to do this page? No, you can totally decide how much or how little of this activity you want to do, but just know that that is an option. Okay, so again, here's our estimated. And now we are jumping into logistics. And here's the little introduction. So if you thought thinking through each recipe was tough, buckle up. It's time for Thanksgiving logistics. You now need to calculate how much time each dish will require. Remember, most people only have one oven and a microwave. How can you make six dishes made at different temperatures and cooking lengths all ready to be served at the same time at the appropriate temperature? A trick many Thanksgiving experts use is to make certain dishes ahead of time. Other dishes are prepared but not cooked until Thanksgiving Day. Some even cooked then reheated. Take note of which dishes are baked at similar temperatures. So again, that's one where they will go back to that recipe card. And this is where they are going to be reading through the recipes here and paying attention to how much time it takes, maybe the temperature that it is done at. And let me point out that this is informational text and reading comprehension in one of its finest and one of my most favorite forms um, to do it. So there's so much happening in this activity that you're not, a lot of times we're not even aware of and that the students aren't even aware of. But this is reading comprehension and this is comprehending informational text. So this is so great. It gets me so excited. So they'll be going through and they're going to kind of be critically thinking and problem solving as they go, as they try and figure out kind of what their game plan is, what is their blueprint for making this um, dinner now come to life that they've planned with all these dishes and they've done the shopping for. So here is our Thanksgiving logistics page. This is the digital version of it. And this is fun. This is also sequencing. So they're going to need to figure out, okay, turkey, I need to do that first. 
And maybe the lemonade, that'll be like the very last thing I do. Or actually, I don't have time to make that lemonade. So I'm going to make that the day before, but I'm not going to put ice in it so it doesn't get watered down. Just all of those thoughts and details are kind of the magic behind all of this. So again, they will number their item based in the sequence that they will be working on it. Um, they'll make their little notes about that. Like we talked about with the turkey, how many days ahead do you even need to pull out that frozen turkey to make sure that it's thawed enough that you can start cooking it? And how much time is it going to take to cook it based on how many pounds it is? So, so fun. And then as we come over here, um, we'll take a note of the time that they will be um, doing it, whether that will be in the morning or in the evening and kind of the date of that. So we've got two pages of that. Let me zoom in or zoom out just a little bit so you can see that full page. So again, our Thanksgiving logistics, um, there's two pages for this. So we have menu item one, two, and three. And then here we have four, five, and six. If you did um, include two more, you could simply just make a duplicate of this slide if you were doing the digital version. So I would just click on that, duplicate the slide. And then they can go in and add those two additional side dishes or, you know, alternative dishes if they wanted to do. Um, and again, so here we have this last page. So what time are you going to need to wake up in order to get started and still have time to get ready for the day? Place your hands on the clock to show your answer. So the kids will just single click and drag. And then they use this little blue circle here to rotate to kind of show the time um, that they will need to wake up. And then here is our, what time will your Thanksgiving dinner start? So place the hands on the clock to show your answer. So again, they are going through and really thinking and problem solving about all of those details and how can they combine meals? And maybe they're gonna make this ahead and then they're gonna reheat all of these different items, but they need to have them in the oven to make sure that they are you know, reheated all the way through at this time. So so fun. I, I love this page. Here's the printable counterpart. Again, very similar. We write through the sequence of which items will be kind of this one I start first, this one I start second, this one I start third. Um, here's the time that it needs to happen. What time will your dinner be served? Will you be making any dishes prior or previous to Thanksgiving day? So kind of that make ahead and then warm up later. What time do you need to wake up? Um, yeah, additional notes. Here's the little question there. Like, do you notice if there are some uh, of the dishes that are at the same temperature, but different cooking times? What type of system will you use to keep everything straight? I love this page. <laughs> Students don't love it until they're done with it. But this is another one of those that it is so eye-opening to all of the thought and the process and the stress that goes into putting together a meal that is honestly done in like 30 minutes. And so it is a good eye-opening experience for them. Here we come to the game plan next. So as we go into the game plan, this is where they are typing it out. And again, this is sequence. This is transitional words. This is writing informational text. Um, so they're going to go through and they are going to write out their game plan. Number one, I wake up at this time. Number two, I'm going to get ready now, or I'm going to put my turkey in, and then I'm going to go get ready. And then I'm going to come and start working on the sweet potatoes. And then I'm going to put all of these dishes in that I've pre-made before in the oven at the same time. So this is where that's happening. And they're encourage them to use those transitional words. Remember that transitional words are followed with a comma. Um, and they go through and kind of write it all out. And again, this is helping taking that Thanksgiving logistics and thinking through all of the things that maybe they didn't think of um, as they were planning it out. And... Here's again with our Thanksgiving logistics, and here's just some kind of reflection questions. A lot of these are found on that single page of Thanksgiving logistics, but with the digital, um, it just works better to have it more spread out and to have more room like this. So just some questions that they might come across um, and reflecting on that, talking about that turkey or ham, um, what day do you need to start the thawing process? Um, are there dishes that could be you know, combined? So a lot of that same stuff that we've talked about. By the time they're done with that, they're gonna need a nice, easy, <laughs> kind of like a brain break type of activity um, because they have been getting nitty and they have been getting gritty to kind of figure out the logistics of that. So here's one of those lighter activities that keep it fun um, and keep kind of that creative aspect in there as well. So here's our Thanksgiving layout page. Um, this you might have 
people with like allergies or things like that, or maybe this person's left-handed. So they need to sit at this side of the table, or this is our joke teller. So I want them to be in the middle because, you know, everyone's going to want to be in on that part of the conversation. So here they can come up with their um, kind of seating arrangements. Um, as they're doing that, I tell them to start thinking about kind of their tablescape as to what they would like that to look like. Um, let's go ahead and see a completed version of this Thanksgiving layout. And I think it is right here. So again, this is where they can insert pictures of their actual people. You could even insert a GIF or a moving picture, which if you use Screencastify, it's a Chrome extension. Um, it makes it very, very easy to do. And if you want to learn how to do that, you can click on that link there. Um, with these avatars, I use Pixton, and it is my favorite way to create um, digital avatars for your class. It's my understanding that it's not free anymore, which is such a disappointment, but I do think that they do a free trial still. So you would at least have the free trial to where you could have all of your kids create the digital avatar, download that, save it to your device, and you save a copy of it as well um, without having to use the paid version. But I've heard great things about the paid version as well. Let's go ahead and look at the printable counterpart of that. So here's their Thanksgiving game plan that we talked about, that informational text, they're writing sequential, they're using transitional words. Here is the layout. So again, what we've been talking about, here's where they say where everyone's going to sit. Um, this makes it a little bit easier. They could just draw the picture if they want. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the tablescape next. So here is our tablescape and here is a completed um, example of what that can look like. So a tablescape, and I'll just read this introduction, is an umbrella term for all of the elements that can make up a table setting. So this is really for your kiddos that just enjoy kind of that event planning, that they love the look of things. Um, uh, it's a really good creative outlet for what they want things to look like. And so here's maybe they find this picture as their inspiration. They can put a picture of the tablecloth or the runner. Here's what I want my placemats to look like. Here's my napkin. I really like the look of this different tableware. Here's the decorative elements. And here's my color scheme. All of this was done. Let me show you what the one that's not completed looks like using the, the Google search and the picture placeholders. So again, it's just searching and then putting it in, and then it'll automatically inf um, fit right in there, right? So maybe my inspiration, so I could single click on that. I could go replace image. I could go search the web, and we could do, let's try like Thanksgiving, or let's actually try fall. Fall, table, setting, and we could even add decor or ideas, and we'll see what Google brings us lovely. So I go through, I look through the images, I find one that I really like and I double click on it and it's automatically going to insert it in there. When I look for say the placemat or the tablecloth or the runner, um, it might be helpful to search like a fabric. And so maybe I want, one sec, we're having a bit, but maybe a gingham, right? A gingham pattern, fall colors. And so I search and I've got these different ones I can pick from. I find the one I want, I double click and it automatically inserts it into that picture placeholder. So again, this is just a good, it's lighter. Um, it's more of kind of that creative um, outlet for your kiddos. It's a great practice for digital skills. Um, that's what our digital page looks like. Let's go ahead and look at the printable counterpart not that page. And again, this is one of those things. Do you have to do all of this? No, you do not. Is it an option? Absolutely. Um, a fun idea with this too, is to have students actually like cut out different pieces. Maybe they have magazines, they could print off um, pictures from, you know, Pinterest. Um, they could even, you know, you could bring in paint samples, the paint chip samples where they just glue it on. Um, they could cut out pieces of fabric and add it there or they could simply just color it and kind of add it in. Um, but there's a lot of things that they could do with this page as a printable as well. Ooh, guys, we are so close. Thank you for being with me through all of this. Okay, finally, we get to the reflection. And I hope out of all of the activities that you, you know, decide to implement, that you do make time for the reflection and for the gratitude letter, um, because that's where everything really comes 
full circle. So let's look at the reflection page. So again, this is where they kind of rate their participation, you know, one through five. I like to um, do a rate based on their attitude and their effort more than I like to uh, rate, do an assessment based on their understanding. Both are extremely important, um, but with this one, I like to know kind of how is your attitude and how is your effort? And then I can assess them on their understanding based on the work that they've done so far. Um, so it, that way, even if it was really hard for them and they really struggled through it, if they did their best, I want them to feel like they have a place to show that, right? But again, this is editable. So on the digital side, if you do want an assessment um, based on their understanding of like the curriculum or the content, this is a great way to do a little snapshot there as well. All of these are actually editable. So if you want to edit these questions um, to kind of fit with your class or what you're looking for, you're totally able to do that. So we've got our Thanksgiving prep reflection. And then we have this activity here. And again, this is a better place for maybe the skill level type of assessment. So maybe with, you know, uh, multiplying decimals or adding decimals um, or rounding to the nearest whole number. Um, this would be where you could do your really quick skill assessment. Um, you could even have them do a pro, like a, I don't know, an example. They can show their example based on this little blue highlighter. They can type out their answer here. You type what you're looking for here. And if you want them to insert a picture of their work, um, they would just do that picture placeholder again. So single click, replace image, and then by camera, or they can just upload it to the computer. So there's our kind of digital versions for assessment. Let's go ahead and look at the printable counterpart. Here is our Thanksgiving prep reflection here. Um, on the printable, anything in the PDF, it is not editable. So just be aware of that. So if there are parts that you would like to edit, um, make sure that you're going to the digital version of that. So here's kind of our reflection. Again, this is based more on effort and attitude. Um, and then we have here um, where you could probably just write it in or tell the kiddos like, this first question, this is what I want you to tell me and do more of a skill base level assessment here and then have them kind of fill in the blank there. Okay, finally, let's go into the extensions. So if that weren't enough, um, I have some fun extensions. This one I hope is not an extension. I hope that this one is a requirement, but I've just included these fun little um, printables where they can just kind of express gratitude now. Um, regarding all of the work, all that they've learned and kind of how their eyes have been opened a little bit, uh, hopefully a lot actually. Um, so what that looks like here, this is a really fun card. You print that off, you fold it in half, and then it's just a fun card that they can write and give to someone to express their gratitude. Or we've got these grateful letters that they can use. You've got the black and white, you've got the printable, you've got the full page. Um, so a lot of great options there. Finally, um, kiddos work at different speeds and different levels. So if you have some fast finishers, um, these extensions are really fun um, and meaningful. And you may even choose to do them as a class because it's a lot of fun to kind of go back and look at it. So like, for example, which recipe will cost the most to make? So have them go back through and based on ingredients and what's included, have them calculate which one will actually cost the most. What about which one is the most budget friendly um, based? And again, we talked about budget. You could even give your kiddos a budget to try and work within based on the recipes that they pick. So Thanksgiving on a budget, what would that look like? Or once everyone's done, if you still have time, say, okay, guys, this is our class budget for, you know, a Thanksgiving dinner. Think of all the people that we have in here. What's our serving size going to look like? What is the least expensive, you know, dinner that we can come up with? So lots of kind of like spinoffs that you could do. So again, we've got all of these fun, different um, questions that will just help kind of with your fast finishers. Um, some of them are ELA, like with your alliteration, going back and kind of um, messing with the menu or the title. Here's a place where they can type in their response. Um, we even have the extensions as a printable here. So here's our printable extensions. Here's where they can type their responses there. Ooh. Guys, we did it. That is the Thanksgiving, um, plan a Thanksgiving dinner project. Again, you are getting, your kiddos are getting exposed to so much great stuff through this one, as far as, you know, math, real world math, um, your ELA, your informational text, um, figurative language, sensory writing, some graphic design, um, 
home economics, like it just goes on and on. So again, this is one of my favorites. I hope that you try it with your class. I would love to hear how it goes. If you have any questions, um, what worked well for you. Um, those of you that have done it in the past, I would love, love, love for you to share kind of like your tips and tricks with what worked really well and kind of your favorite parts. Um, one other thing that I wanted to point out with you that I have included in this that can be helpful. So this is included with the digital version. If you're a little nervous about having your students use kind of like the digital activity, this is something that can be really helpful. This is my tech skills page. And what I have them do, I think that I need to actually send those back. That one's already completed. Um, but essentially, it's just all of these different skills that your students need to do in order to feel confident um, about moving forward. Because if they can do all of these skills here, they, oh, it's because that's the answer key. That makes more sense. Here's my tech skills page. So I would assign them this, assign them the tech skills page. And if they can do all of these tasks, they can do everything that's required in the digital version. Um, and if they have questions or if they get stuck, I've included a tech skills video tutorial that walks them through every single one of those little tasks. Um, that way they can feel confident as you assign kind of the digital version of it. One question that we might run into if you haven't done a digital version and like how to assign that, it is extremely simple. Um, it always starts the same way. So I always start with making a copy of the slides that you want your students to see. So you go file make a copy, and then you would go through and you're gonna select the slides that you want your students to see. So I would click, um, that's a completed example. If you want them to see a completed example, I'm having some wait time here, so I'm having a hard time clicking on it. But you're gonna click and highlight each of the slides that you want your students to see. Once you have those highlighted, and I think that it is, it's command. My computer is a Mac and it is command. I think it'll be the same for you. So that allows me to go through and pick and choose. Notice how that slide is highlighted and this one is highlighted. So I would go through and I would pick all the slides that I want my students to see. Then I would do file and I would make a copy of all of those selected slides right there, selected slides. And then I would rename it as the student version of plan a Thanksgiving meal. And again, you don't have to select everything. You can totally kind of pick and choose which activities you want them to do. And you can combine. Remember, you can combine both the, pr the printable version and the digital version. If you're wondering where the digital version is um, on this, I'll show you one more time. I've got it at the first in the bottom, um, but this is what you're looking for. You'll click here and then you'll click on this link and that'll bring you to that PDF that we've been looking through and kind of going through. So again, this works really well to use a little bit of both, but you could do 100% digital or you can do 100% print version. It's completely up to you. But once you've got those slides, I'll finish up. You would come here, you would share it with your students. You would make sure that you have it um, set to where anyone can edit or view that student copy of it. And then you'll simply copy the link and you can share it in Google Classroom. Um, if you are a Microsoft school, you could also come here and go file, download, and download the slides as a Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, and that allows you to assign it as a PowerPoint instead. Um, but again, so much you can do with this. My computer is having a fit. So I think that we will end it here.